This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, any tips on making evenly spaced and sized holes like those on a hockey mask? So to start off, I have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have an example file here loaded in. So I've created a simple kind of hockey mask here that fits on the female head. And so if I just turn this off really quick, you can see here we have the female head. And then I've just created a mask here that fits on her face. Now the question is asking about creating evenly sized holes on a model, like those on a hockey mask. So with my mask here, I want to go through and I want to start generating some holes here. But if you've ever seen a hockey mask, there are usually multiple holes around the mouth area and also around the forehead. And these are all a consistent size and they're usually spaced the same distance apart. So how can I go by quickly making those on my model here? So the workflow I'm going to demonstrate is going to use the live Boolean system. And with the system, you can freely create shapes inside a ZBrush and move them around and create holes on your meshes. So the first thing I want to do with my file here is I want to make sure I have my mask selected. And with my mask selected here, I want to turn this subtool into a start group. So I'm going to come over to the mask here and I'm going to activate this down arrow option here. And this is going to turn this mask into a start group. Now what the start group is going to do is when I activate the live Boolean, it's going to isolate this part of my model and create a Boolean process based around that start group. So now that I have my mask set as a start group, I now can start appending in some different shapes. So I want to create holes on this, like a hockey mask. So I'm going to append in a cylinder 3D object. I'm going to make sure I have my mask still selected. Make sure I'm in the tool palette. I'm going to go to the subtool area here. Navigate to the append button here and just click this. This will open up the quick pick menu here. In here I want to navigate and locate the cylinder 3D object and then click that, and that will now append a new cylinder primitive to my scene. So now I can come and select that cylinder primitive, and I can zoom out a little bit. Now the cylinder primitive is extremely large at this stage, so I'm going to come to the top here, and I'm going to select Move Scalar Rotate, and this is going to give me the Gizmo 3D. With this, I can come across the center here, and I can scale XYZ, which is going to give me a uniform scale across all the axes. And I'm going to scale this down, and I just want to scale down a little bit. You'll notice when I scale it down, it's going to scale into the entire model here. So I want to rotate to the side, and then I'm going to use this Move Z option, and I'm just going to pull my cylinder out so I can see it. And then I'm going to scale it down again. And then I also want to scale it in the Y to make it a little bit of a long cylinder shape, like this. So now I have this cylinder shape that I've appended, and then I've used the Gizmo 3D just to scale and manipulate it some to end up with something like this. Now I'm going to go back to my draw mode here, and you'll notice I have some facetting still shown on the cylinder here. So at this stage, I can apply some creasing and then apply some dynamic subdivisions, and this is going to give me a nice crisp shape on my cylinder. So I'm going to go to the tool palette. I'm going to navigate down to the geometry area here. I'm first going to apply some creasing based on the edge angles of the cylinder. So I'm going to the crease menu. And with the crease menu open, I just want to click this crease option here. When you click this crease option, it's going to use this tolerance slider located below. And it's going to look at the model. And anywhere there's a 45 degree angle, it's going to apply a crease. So I'm just going to come over here and click crease. And now I'll apply creasing to the mesh. And after I have that creasing applied, I can now go to this dynamic subdivision option here, open this up, and now I can enable dynamic. And when I turn dynamic on, you'll see that the cylinder now appears to be very smooth, but I still have those harsh tops and bottoms. Now the harshness of the tops and the bottoms is because I creased the model. If I go back to the geometry palette and open up the crease area here, and now do a uncrease all, you'll notice that now those caps of those cylinders have been uncreased, so they're no longer going to hold that harsh edge, and now I'm going to get an effect like this. So you can see now I have a tapered cylinder. 
For the hockey mask here, I wanted to keep those harsh, so I came through and applied that creasing based on those 45 degree angles, and now I have a nice harsh top and bottom edge to my cylinder. So now that the cylinder is set up like this, I can now manipulate this a little bit more. I'm gonna come back up to the top here and click on Move, Scale, or Rotate to get me back to the Gizmo 3D. I'm now going to hover over the Rotate Screen area of the Gizmo 3D. I'm going to click and drag, and while dragging, I'm gonna hold down Shift, and this is going to angle snap, and I wanna position this in a 90 degree angle there. So I have something like this. And now I wanna take this model, and I'm just going to position it in screen space, and I just wanna position it down to say this area right here, and then I wanna move it so it intersects that mask. So now I have the cylinder object, and it's intersecting that mask shape. So now, after I have this process generated, I can now use this cylinder shape as a Boolean subtractive part. So I'm going to come to the top here and activate Live Boolean by clicking this button here. Then I'm going to go back to my subtool palette. I'm going to go and see that my mask subtool is still set as a start group. And then directly below it, I have that cylinder 3D object. With that cylinder 3D object, I want to change these little icons here at the top. And these are gonna change the effect that the Boolean will generate. So we have union, then we have subtraction, and then we have intersection. Now coming across the subtool and clicking on one of these icons, just disable my Gizmo 3D here, you'll see that it's going to change how the subtool is now being affected by the Boolean. So if I have it on union, you'll see that the cylinder there is going to be visible along with the mask. If I have this set to subtraction, now you'll see that the cylinder object has been subtracted out of the mask. And then if I change this to intersection, it's only going to display geometry where those two parts intersect. So by changing these options here, you're going to be able to determine how this Boolean process is going to affect your models. So I want to leave this on subtraction because I'm trying to generate holes into the mask here. Now the live Boolean process is an interactive process. So what this means is I can go back up to the move scale and rotate option with the Gizmo 3D, and now I can move this around. And you'll see as I move this, it's going to perform that subtractive process wherever I position this model on my mesh. So I can see if I want the holes over here, maybe over here, and I can play with the style and the design as this Boolean system is currently in preview mode. So I want to create three holes for the mask here, for where the mouth is. So I'm going to position one like this. And what I want to do is I want to now create two more duplicates of this object. And I want them to be spaced at an equal distance. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have that cylinder subtool selected. I want to make sure that this subtool has no subdivisions. So you can see in the geometry tab here, I have no subdivisions on this model. And now what I want to do is I want to hold down the control key and then I wanna hover over any of the move options on the Gizmo 3D. So for the holes on the hockey mask here, I wanna be in a vertical fashion, so I'm gonna hold down control, and I'm gonna cover over the move Z option, and I'm just going to click and drag while holding control. And this is going to create a duplicate of my object. So you can see now I have two of these cylinders. Now after I have drawn one of these cylinders, I just want to release control, and now I can continue moving and this is going to generate multiple cylinders at the distance I set. So you can see, as I clicked and dragged, I've now generated multiple cylinders across my mesh here. Now, I only really needed three, but just for demonstration purposes, I created five. So I'm just gonna undo this quick and just do this process one more time. So make sure you first have the object selected that you want to duplicate. Make sure that you have no subdivisions on that model. Then activate the Gizmo 3D by clicking on Move, Scale, or Rotate. Come across any of the Move options on the Gizmo 3D. Hold down the Control key on your keyboard. Click and drag to establish the offset that you want to happen. And then release Control and continue dragging, and this will allow you to create multiple duplicates of that mesh at that specific offset. So now if I go back to draw here, you can see I've now created those three holes on my mask here. Now these holes might be a little bit too big, so now I can manipulate these as well. So when you do this duplication process using Control and the Gizmo 3D, you wanna make sure you clear your mask afterwards. So I'm gonna hold down Control and just clear that off quick. 
Then I'm gonna switch back to the Gizmo 3D and I wanna center this on those three parts there. So I'm gonna click this little go to unmasked mesh center button here. And this will now center the Gizmo 3D there. Now I can uniform scale this down to make this a little bit smaller. So now I have those three holes like that. Now I want these to be positioned a little bit under the nose here, maybe scale them up a little bit more. And then I also wanna create a duplicate version of these on the other side of the mask. So to do this duplication, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the world axis, which this mask is currently centered to, and I'm going to perform a mirror and weld function. This mirror and weld function is going to look at the parts of geometry that are on this side of my model here, and it's going to mirror and weld it to the other side. So with this tool consisting of now these three cylinders, I can now go to my tool palette. I can go down to the geometry tab here. I can now go to the modify topology area, and in here there is a mirror and weld button. Now with this button, you have options here that you can change how this mirror and weld is going to happen. So currently right now, this is set in the X axis. So if I click this button here, it's going to take these cylinders here and it's going to mirror it in the X axis. So if I come over here and click mirror and weld, you'll see that I've now taken those cylinder objects and now mirrored them to the other side. So now I have just created that mouth area for my hockey mask. Now I may wanna take these now and move them up to the forehead here. So to do this, you have a few options. I could duplicate these parts again, like I did before with the Gizmo 3D, or I can come to my subtool palette and I can just duplicate the subtool. So I make sure I have that cylinder subtool selected and then I'm gonna click duplicate, which is gonna give me a duplicate version of those subtools. You'll notice as you click the duplicate option there that it's going to change the Boolean operation icon back to the union. So you can see now these cylinders look like this. I can now switch to my Gizmo 3D. I can center my Gizmo 3D to the unmasked portion of that subtool. And then I can click and drag to move these up to the forehead area like so. And now I can set that subtool to subtractive as well. And now you'll notice that I now have those holes at the top and the bottom of my mask. Now, one final thing that this hockey mask needs is it needs some eye holes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna append in another cylinder object. So I'm gonna go back to my subtool palette and click the append button here to open up my quick pick. In here, I'm gonna select the cylinder 3D object again. So I have a new cylinder object. I'm gonna select that cylinder object. I'm going to now switch to my Gizmo 3D. I'm gonna rotate to the side. I'm going to rotate in screen space, holding shift to lock it into a 90 degree angle. Then I'm gonna scale this down and move this out and then scale this and position it right over here where the eye area would be, so something like that. I wanna also now subdivide this up with those dynamic subdivisions so it's not as faceted around the edges. So I'm gonna do that same process again where I'm gonna apply some creasing and then activate dynamic subdivisions. So I'm gonna go back to my tool palette, make sure I have that cylinder object selected. Go down to the geometry tab here go to the crease area, I'm gonna click crease, which will now crease that selected subtool based on the tolerance angle here. And now I'm going to activate dynamic subdivisions. And if I rotate to the side of that cylinder there, you're gonna see it's now looking nice and smooth. I can now come down to the geometry palette again, and now I can perform that mirror and weld function again, which is going to take the cylinder that's over here and mirror it to the other side. So I'm just gonna click mirror and weld. So now I have two cylinders there, creating those eye holes on my model. Now I'm gonna navigate back up to my subtool palette, and I wanna go down to those cylinders that I have for the eyes, and I wanna set those to subtractive as well. And now you'll notice I'm getting something like this. Let's switch back to draw mode, and now you can see I have this hockey mask with those cylinders cut out for the eyes, along with the other ones I did at the mouth and forehead area. Now, we talked a little bit about how the live Boolean process is a dynamic process and you can change it on the fly. Well, you can also reposition meshes and other things while live Boolean is active. So let's say with these eyes here, they're a little bit too cylindrical, so they're too perfect. So I'm going to switch to the move brush by hitting B on my keyboard, then hitting the M key, and then pressing the V key, and that will select the move brush for me there. I want to make sure I have symmetry turned on, so I'm going to hover across my model and then press X, and you now should see two dots appearing, so you can see I have symmetry 
based on the X axis enabled. Now I want to get a little larger brush here. So I'm going to come up to the top here and increase my draw size. And then I'm going to come across the cylinder object here. And I'm just going to use the move brush on this. So as I move, you'll see it's going to deform that cylinder. And this is going to allow me to tailor those eye holes. So I can come and change my draw size, maybe a little bit smaller size here, and just come in and tweak these little areas. So just playing with the shapes and forms by manipulating that negative object. So I'm manipulating that cylinder object, and since that object is set to a Boolean subtractive mode, I can now manipulate those holes on the hockey masks there. Now, after you're happy with all the Boolean operations you set up, you now can leave it like this in its preview mode, and you can do renders from inside a ZBrush, or you can turn this into traditional geometry. So right now, we're in the Boolean preview mode. So if I come up here and disable live Boolean, you can see this is what my model looks like. So you can see all those cylinders sticking out of the mask. However, when I enable live Boolean, I'm now getting it previewed with those parts being subtractive forms. So I want to take the model now and process that Boolean effect and generate a new mesh out of it that consists of true geometry. So to do this, I'm going to come back over here and I'm just going to select the mask. I want to make sure that I only have the start group for the mask visible. So I'm going to come to the eyes and turn off their eyeball icon. And then I'm going to go to the female head and turn off that eyeball icon as well. And so now I should just have the mask visible. Next, I want to come down to the Boolean area here and open this up. I want to turn on this dynamic subdivision button here, since I was using dynamic subdivision for those cylinder objects to keep them nice and sharp. And then I want to click the Make Boolean Mesh. Now, when you click Make Boolean Mesh, ZBrush is going to look for any start groups you have in your scene, and it's going to start with that first subtool, and it's going to process those Booleans until it runs into another start group. So since I only have one start group here on my model, it's only going to process these four subtools here, and then it's going to generate a new tool for me with the result of that Boolean operation. So I'm going to come down here and click Make Boolean Mesh, and now this is going to process. After this is finished, I just need to come back up to the top here to my tool palette, and you'll see I have a new Boolean result mesh created. So if I come to the tool palette and click that, you can see this is the result of the Boolean process. And if I turn on my polyframes here, and you'll notice that the topology here is the exact same as it was on the original model. And the only difference in topology is at the intersections. So anywhere where those parts intersected, you'll see there has been some triangles created, but the rest of the model has stayed with the same topology. So using the live Boolean system is incredible for keeping the topology of your existing model and then also allowing you to generate holes or different effects and not distort the original geometry. So this is a really nice process for generating effects such as keys for toys or even slicing things up for 3D printing. So after I have the Boolean result of this mesh, I now just need to pen this back into my original scene. So I'm going to come back to the tool palette. I'm going to select my original mask file here. Then I'm going to go to the subtool area. I'm going to click on the append option again. And now I'm just going to append back in the Boolean processed mask. So now I have this as a new subtool. So now I can come across and change the visibility of all my subtools. So I'm going to make sure I have this Boolean mesh selected. I'm going to hold down the Shift key and then click this eyeball icon here. And when you hold down Shift and click the eyeball icon on the selected subtool, it's going to turn on and off all the visibility of all the subtools in your scene. So I wanted to turn everything off except for the mask. So I held down Shift and clicked the eyeball icon. And now I'm just left with the mask. Now I can turn the eyeball icon on for that subtool. And then I can turn on the eyeball icon for the female head along with her eyes. And now I have my scene looking like this. So I have quickly just gone through and made some holes in that hockey mask. And now I have the female demo head here wearing a hockey mask. So I hope that helps, and if you have any questions related to ZBrush pipelines and processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing!